Okay, we're going to be a little different this time, as you can already see. There's lots of stuff I wrote already. I found that I tried it once. I usually do these in one out, one take, but this time I just couldn't get it done. So here's the story. What Niles Bohr did, besides developing the beginning of the quantum model of the atom, is he explained a concept in physics in, uh, in starting the 20th century that could not be explained with classical physics. And that is this, they could not explain, explain the hydrogen line spectrum. Now quickly we have to learn about light. Light is defined by the formula C is the speed of light and multiplied the wavelength times the frequency gives you the speed of light and that speed is meters per second, that's a constant, and wavelength is in meters, and how many vibrations you get per second, cycles per second, notice the left side equals the right side. The hydrogen spectrum had four colors, and you'll see here that we're putting the hydrogen spectrum. They couldn't explain the black space, the place where there's no energy. That they, Because all energy up to that time was a continuous flow. Now, what helped this was the work by Max Planck, who identified the possibility of quantum levels of packets of energy in heating up black bodies. Uh, Max Planck did this work in 1900, and about five years later, Einstein interpreted this in terms of light as in what he coined the phrase photons. But let's look at what we got. Here's a spectrum right here of hydrogen. There's a red line, a blue one, a light blue, a blue violet, and another, and it's hard to see, violet. And each of these have a wavelength. Now, a wavelength is, if we have a wave, like so, there it is, and it's propagate, and it's going along this way, and we're going to draw so we're an axis line going right through here. Okay. Now, the, the distance from this point to this point is called the wavelength and is symbolized by the Greek symbol lambda. How many cycles you have going by a point per second is frequency. And that's the Greek symbol nu and u. The product of these two will always be a constant, the speed of light. Now here's the thing. If you take this red line, the wavelength is 656 nanometers. And now I have 6.56 down here times 10 to the 2. And I convert that 1 meter is 10 to the 9 nanometers. I convert it to meters. And I put the value over here and use the equation for frequency equals speed of light over wavelength and I got a frequency. Then I use Einstein's equation, E equals H nu, which is the equation that, de that defines the energy of a line of light called a photon. And the red photon is 3.03 .03 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. That's from reality. Now here's what Bohr did. Bohr said that electron jumps from the second level to the third level. See, they can jump from all different levels. Uh, second level, uh, an excited level two to an excited level three. When it drops back, the difference between these two energies in electron volts is 1.89 electron volts. If you take those 1.89 electron volts and multiply it by this conversion factor right here, one joule is equal to 6.26 times 10 to the 18 electron volts. You get 3.04 times 10 to the minus 19. So, you see why I put this down quickly so we can go through this and I'm going to repeat it. What I got is two values that are about the same, difference of a hundreds. This is from the actual red line in the hydrogen spectrum. And here, Niles Bohr, model gives us this line. If you did Niles Bohr's thing for each of these four 
colors, you would get those those same get an energy for each of those four, and you would be going from instead of one the red is from second to third and back. This is where the energy comes out. The other one is from second to fourth coming back. That would give you your blue. Next one is second to the fifth, and energy comes back. That's the first violet. Next one is a sixth one from the up. And you notice the distance is greater, and blue light or violet light is higher energy than red. And this is the depiction. This would be red. This would be blue. And these two are violet one. Yeah, I can't even see that one on here. I'll write violet one and violet two. So, the physicists at the time said, how can you have these colors and no, nothing in between? Because they thought energy flowed in a continuous matter. This is saying no, energy is, can be quantized. These electrons can jump from two to three, never from two to two and a half, or two to two and three quarters, anything like that. So the, the model, Bohr's model, fits and gives you the same value is what you can get from the mathematics uh, of actually taking the red or the blue or the blue violet, converting the wavelength, and I'll repeat, I converted the wavelength to meters because frequency is wavelength uh, in the denominator in meters and the numerator is meters per second, so you have to have meters. And then I converted it to energy by multiplying it by a constant, a direct proportion as frequency goes up, energy goes up. Now this is a more advanced topic and we could be doing this later on probably again and you'd have a better understanding. But what I'm trying to show you right now is this, simply. Niles Bohr began with the atom suggesting that the atom's levels are quantized. They're discrete levels, and electrons can only be at certain levels and cannot be at other levels. Okay, we're going to stop right that now and uh, go on to further into the electron, electron three. And that's what I suggest you look at, electron three.